a generator, supplying the hut with power. There is obviously no more fuel in it. That would have been too good. This has been plundered. Everything that can be taken off and carried is gone. There are only two small nuts here, and I am having them. There still seems to be a bit of diesel oil in there. Hmm, there are still plenty of vodka in there. If I want the one spirit, I think I will have to get rid of the other. Nastarovia! Oops, I think I'm a bit out of practice. <laughs> that must be the research station that the transit train was supposed to be going to. Has it even arrived there at all? The research station is certainly impressive. It even has its own runway, and probably just as impressively secured. I can forget getting in there. I'm not even sure that I want to go in anyway. After all, I have heard and read about this station and the place it was built on. Anyway, the station does radiate a certain fascination. Not a positive one. And the longer I look, the more I get the shivers. I'd better make my way back. There's a lot to do, and I still don't know what secret out of Daddy's past is concealed here. what I call quality craftsmanship. Over 50 years old, and it still works like it did when it came out of the factory. I'll hold both nuts close to the coils, but not too close, otherwise I'll be toast. As a result, they seem to have become magnetized. The rag is soaked through. I would never have dreamed that one day I would clean out a chimney from the inside. I'll light the lamp. Now that the suit is off, I can see numbers written on it. Seven and a half, three, ten and a half, six. Now that the suit... That's strange. Obviously, the compass needle only moves when I press the button. I seem to have triggered a mechanism, but nothing has happened yet. secret compartment. There are a few old documents and a roll of film in there. I'll have a look at the documents. Maybe my father left them there. Yes, indeed. He describes that the 1958 expedition apparently could not provide an explanation why the plant growth has changed so much here since the catastrophe of 1908. The discovery of a meteorite hoped for by the government as a cause of the devastating explosion also did not materialize. For this reason, neither my father in his function as the leader of the expedition, nor the biologist, Ken Morangi, could provide an unambiguous conclusion, which obviously was not regarded favorably by the authorities. Oh, and they are also briefly mentioning Oleg here, but apparently he was not that important. Hmm, I guess I'd better not tell him that. Years later, in his function as a geologist, at the Academy of Sciences in Moscow, my father examined a strange piece of metal that had been found in the Tunguska region. 
He then was able to prove its non-terrestrial origins, which breathed new life into the meteorite theory. However, upon further analysis, he and his colleague Manuel Perez discovered traces that indicated that the metal had been worked. When they wanted to publish their discovery in the Kalenkove Expert, it was completely, surprisingly rejected, and they were forbidden any further examination of the rock. When my father continued to inquire about the happenings in the Tunguska region, he was dismissed from the Academy of Sciences. The last entries are from 1977. Obviously, he and Manuel Perez went to the Tunguska region on their own. They hoped to find additional fragments of that strange material so they could continue their studies. What the goal was and what happened isn't written down in here. In addition, I have this burning desire to know what is going on with this fragment. On the one hand, it's probably not of terrestrial origin, but on the other hand, it was processed. That would mean... The old Evink also said something about his son finding some metal fragment in the woods and then suddenly disappearing. That would fit in with the fact that my father was even thrown out of the Academy of Sciences due to his analysis. I hope that I will find some more answers on that roll of film. I've wrapped the tinfoil around the broken glass. Damn, the bulb has burned out. It's not possible to just pop around to the shops and get another around this place. So now is the time to think of something else. I've put in the modified glass shard. If I now shine in there with a strong flashlight, maybe it will work as well as the light bulb did. But where do I get a flashlight? As an obedient little housewife, of course I know what my duties are. There, finished. Shall I make dinner now as well? So, Manuel, the camera's rolling. Please excuse me for a moment. I'll be right back. What was that? Lightning? Or sheet lightning? And what happened to this Manuel Perez? That sounded like an explosion. I should see what's going on. Looks as if half the station exploded. <gasps> come on, come on! Move your asses! The intruders have to be around here somewhere. We'll get them. Spread out! Oh, my head. What was that? Feels like someone sifted through my thoughts. There's someone up there! Get them! Damn. I have to get away from here. That was close. No problem. I told you that I would catch you if you were ever standing on the edge of a precipice. What happened? We just saw that some areas of the research station were in flames, and suddenly there were soldiers everywhere. I don't know much more either. Suddenly two strange figures appeared in front of me out of nowhere. From the FSB? No, they weren't agents. I'm not really sure. This may sound kind of stupid, but I'm not even sure if they were human. What? 
I... I don't know how I should describe it. It was more like a feeling that I got from them. What did they want? Did they say anything? They didn't really speak. It was more like... voices inside my head. It was as if they were looking for an answer. What kind of answer? I don't know how to describe the feeling. It was as if my head was going to explode. I've never experienced pain like that. And then suddenly, I knew that I wanted to tell them everything. It was suddenly so clear. You told them everything? No. Before I could say anything, the soldiers came and the two figures disappeared as suddenly as they appeared. Where are we flying to anyway? In the meantime, Sergei has found out that your father was never in Moscow. So it almost looks as if the entire trip was pretty much in vain. No, on the contrary. I'm now sure that my father was kidnapped for some reason that has to do with the Tunguska catastrophe. How come? I found some of my father's old documents. If I haven't misunderstood them, he was on the trail of something big. And I have a name. Manuel Perez. He was with my father back then. And we also know approximately where he is now. Yes, in a mental institution on Cuba. Great lead. It's gotta be worth a try. And there's another name on the list. This Irish biologist, Ken Morangi. That's right. I know that I have already asked a lot from you two. And I'm deeply indebted to you. And I would understand... Stop rambling. What's your plan? You're heading to Cuba and I'm heading to Ireland? You'd really do that? You can pay me back some other time. For example, by buying me a cup of hot coffee. Max, you're a sweetheart. And don't you ever forget it.